Okay. Good afternoon once again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, maganda weather natin. Our weather is now uh, starting to get warm, right? So, but but spring na ba? Hindi naman. Summer pala. But but spring. Okay. Um, looking at the time, para hindi na kasi yung necessary. So, okay. For our uh, for our topic for this time or for this afternoon is on the theme of deliverance, life changing, new life or new beginning. I guess probably some of you already saw that poster that I post on Facebook and most likely most of you would have some idea uh, the topic that we will be discussing for this afternoon or for today. And the title of the message that I have prepared uh, for tonight is the blind strength. Okay, so we will talk about uh, the life of Samson, and uh, you could find his story in the book of Judges in the Old Testament, chapter 13 up to 16. But before we do, let's uh, uh, before we jump into our uh, message for this afternoon, let's open this in a word a word of prayer. Let's come to the Lord. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we would like to thank you once again for being us here. We thank you, Lord God, for gathering us and uh, for giving us the privilege and uh, the opportunity, Lord God, to uh, worship you in this place, to sing songs, and to study your word. We pray, Lord God, as we ponder through the scripture, we pray that you will open our hearts and our mind, Lord God, as we receive your message uh, for, for us, Lord. Lord, we entrust everything to you. I personally pray, Lord God, that uh, you cover me, Lord God, with your cross and use me only as a footstool. And be the deliverer, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you will be the one to preach the message and uh, be glorified in our lives. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, God made us uh, and called us to be unique. Do you agree? Not tayo. We are called by God and made by God to be unique. When we are operating outside our calling, we're basically operating outside God's power. Pag lumalabas tayo dun sa uh, calling natin. We all need to stick with to what makes us unique. God is calling us to live in this world, but God is calling us to a value system that is different than the world in which we are into, right? The same problem which our biblical character got into when he tried to add some spice in the mix. Okay, this is what we're going to discuss. The light of something. Oh, it's not working. We get forward na lang lang. Right? Yeah, okay. Pause lang muna. Uh, Nag-basketball kami kahapon eh. So I was so inspired with the basketball so I, I put something on, on the, the poster. You know, life is like a ball game. You know? sino, sa, sino sa inyo, nag, sino ba sa atin nag-basketball? Kahapon. So, <laughs> nag-enjoy ako watching. Hindi ako nakapaglaro. Sila lang. Okay? Uh, life is like a ball game. Ball games have half time, right? Half time at a time of resting and assessment. It is a short break in the middle of the game to, to a kind of regather and relook at things. There are many teams that have been ahead at halftime at the end who lost, right? And there are many teams who were losing during halftime, but at the time the game was over, things had turned around. Diba? Kasi minsan yung halftime important yun eh. That is where we regather, you know? that is where we, we, we revisit our plan. Right? There are four quarters, and that makes up these two halves. Sino ba sa inyo naglalaro? Who among you are playing volleyball, basketball, soccer? There's always first half and second half, right? Um, but, it is, okay, but it is not until the final whistle is blown that we were able to make a definitive statement how about how things would turn out. Until the end, hindi natin malalaman kung sino talaga ang nanalo, right? 
It's not over yet. I don't know what quarter are you in your life. The fact of the matter is neither do you. Because we don't know when the final whistle is going to blow. But all series has been called and it's not too late. Simply I want to suggest if we are still here, then we are still on the game. The clock is still ticking and therefore let us not allow our past to define our future. Perhaps at this point, life has been a losing proposition for some of us. Parang iba sa atin, parang at this point, parang uh, we, we feel so uh, depressed of our situation. Probably a series of mistakes here and there, sins, failures, or disappointments. But we're still here at the, uh, and the final whistle has not been blown. The game is still on. So basically what I'm trying to say is, hanggang nandito tayo, until, uh, while we're still here, life must go on. No, it's still not the end of the road. Brokenness is God stripping us of our self-sufficiency. It is God's bringing us to the end of ourselves. Brokenness is making John 15 a reality in our lives. And sabi sa John 15, without God, we cannot do nothing. The problem is that it's easy to say. Madaling sabihin yun eh. It is a whole different ball game to live and that without Him, we can do nothing. Parang madali lang sabihin. But it's, it's, sometimes it's hard to put it into practice. Our subject for tonight's message is a well-known biblical character. And I guess everyone knows his name is Samson. Upon reading the four chapters of the life of Samson, recording the book of the Judges, you can find his life in Judges chapter 13, 14, 15, and 16. And one might wonder, how is this man made it to the Hall of Faith? Remember when, when Hebrews chapter 11 was written in the New Testament, his name was there. His name is listed in the Hall of Faith. Time will not allow us to go through the whole story of Samson in detail. Masyadong mahaba. We cannot finish it. But allow me to just summarize it later. But before we do, let me give you some background about what the surrounding, sub, uh, surrounding subject of our, uh, our message. Let me give you some background. Okay, so everyone is familiar with it, right? So how, it, how does the book originate it? How did the book of Judges start then? When we talk about the judge, we immediately uh, think about a courtroom. Akala natin, when, when we hear the word judge, you know, the first thing that comes to our mind is the courtroom. We think of a bench, we think of the court law, we, when we think of a judge, we think of somebody who is instructing the juror or who is somebody who is hearing cases or working with attorneys. That is what we view of a judge, right? But that is not something uh, that we will be discussing for, for this afternoon. And we need to think differently. You know, the Hebrew term that is rendered judge can be rendered as judge. But it is a word that actually means, listen to this, the judge written in the Old Testament means deliverer. The kind of judge that we're going to discuss about was someone who was chosen by God to protect, to preserve, and to deliver or rescue the Israelites from its enemies. Now, let's look at uh, the time uh, where and where we are at the moment. So, as you can see, I have encircled the stage of the judge's stage. Remember this nine stage, this nine eras? So we're going to talk about uh, the book of the judge. The period was in the Old Testament, and this is part of history, uh, Israel history. It was after the time that Joshua, who led the people of Israel into the land of promise, from four centuries plus the bandage of captivity in Egypt. So remember, on Exodus, they have exited yung Egypt. Diba? Umalis sila sa Egypt. And then, after Moses uh, led, 
uh, it was succeeded by Joshua. It was before the reign of the kings, be, uh, beginning with Saul, and then David, and then Solomon. It was the, the judges' stage. It was that period of history between Joshua and Saul. Remember, on the conquest stage, the leading person, leading the Israelites at that time, after Moses, it was Joshua. Actually, Moses was not able to get inside the promised land. And it was Joshua who delivered the Israelites' people into the promised land. So that was during the conquest stage. And then what I'm basically trying to give you some idea is that the judges' stage is in between the time of Joshua and be, uh, before the time of the kings. Remember, on, on uh, the first five stages, there was no king yet. The first king that was raised in Israel was King Saul. And his reign started in the United Kingdom stage. So during the judges stage, there is no king yet. And, and in order for the Lord to preserve uh, the Israelites, the people of God, he need to raise a king? No. He need to raise judges. And this is the judges that we're going to discuss this afternoon, not the courtroom judge, okay? God promised to preserve his nation during the time of Abraham. Diba? It was promised to Abraham. Sabi niya kay Abraham, po protectionan ko yung lahi mo. Sabi niya ganon. Through that nation, he promised to bless the world and through that nation to bring the seed that would be the Messiah. It is in the seed of Abraham where the Messiah would come from. God made this promise and God will fulfill that promise even though through history, an apostate, and believing nation, God keeps His promise. Miski pa ulit-ulit na nagkakasala ang mga tao, the Lord will continue to be faithful to His promise. And this is the story of the judges. It is a reflection of God's promise. The story of the judges is a story of God's protection of, of a very wicked people, the people of Israelites. It is the story of God's faithfulness to, prom uh, to the promise he made to Abraham regarding the perpetuity of his people in Israel. Perpetuity means continuity. Okay? The book of Joshua ends with the Israelite entered the promised land. Yung conquest stage, which is a part of Joshua, uh, I mean, which Joshua is part of, it ends with the, the, the portion where they have already entered the promised land. And they were pledging that they are going to do whatever the Lord asked them to do. So during that time, when, when Joshua uh, delivered them uh, to the promised land, the, the first re response of the people was they were saying, we are going to follow what the Lord is going to say. So at that point, everything is okay. Maganda pa yung, ano, maganda pa yung pinanghahawakan nila. Okay? Uh, we could see this in Joshua chapter 24, verse 24. The people said to Joshua, We will serve the Lord our God and we will obey His voice. That is their promise. Okay? Uh, that is what they're going to do. But this, there is a problem. When the nation of Israel went into the land of Canaan, remember, Canaan is the land of promise, okay? Okay, let me ask you a, a simple question. The promised land that the Lord has promised to the people of Israelite is Canaan. What do you think? Is Canaan occupied or not yet? No, siya, when, when the Lord promised that the land of promise to the Israelite, is it being occupied already or not? It was already occupied. That's very good. Because sometimes some people think that the Lord is offering them the promised land and they were thinking that it is free and open and no one is, is occupying it. No, hindi po ganon. The promised land that, that the Lord is offering the Israelite, there is already occupants. May mga nakatira na doon. But, but the thing is, the Lord is promising the Israelite that is yours. Hindi yun sa kanila. That is not for them. That is for you. And that is the problem. May problema ngayon. Meron na 
current na occupant or tenant dun sa promised land. Okay? In order for the Israelites to survive that land, they would have to be delivered from a devastating power of these resident enemies. So meaning to say, the promised land before the people inside have been, uh, uh, were able to get into that place, they are already resident. And the problem is, these residents were enemies of the Israelites. Meaning to say, umalis sila sa land of Egypt.